All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing college football teams that don't exist anymore, and it is kind of self-explanatory. These are just college football teams that went defunct. Basically, they always list the same reasons. The football program costs too much. They have a terrible stadium situation. They have bad attendance. That's normally the reasons they list outside of one university that I'm going to get to. That's probably the most famous defunct college football team. But the first one, this is the most recent defunct college football team that does not exist anymore. Their last season was in 2019, and it's the Jacksonville Dolphins. Now, if you guys are familiar with college basketball, you're going to recognize a lot of these schools. Jacksonville certainly is not a very good college basketball basketball team, but they are obviously in college basketball. They had a stadium with a capacity of 5,000, and in December of 2019, the university said that they were discontinuing their football program immediately. And yes, looking at the stadium, this was just an FCS team, but RIP to the Jacksonville Dolphins. Kind of a weird name considering the Miami Dolphins, the NFL team, and then you have the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you combine both of them, and you get the Jacksonville Dolphins. So they were the most recent defunct team that does not exist anymore. This is an actual news article from it because it's so recent. They actually have this stuff. In a stunning Tuesday morning announcement, Jacksonville University said that it will no longer play football and will discontinue its Division I program. The university cited a data-driven analysis as the reason for the major changes to the athletics program. They finished 3-9. and nine. Yeah, they were not good. And, and pretty much all of these teams were not very good when they decided to disband. But that is just Jacksonville back in 2019. The next one, this was back in 2010, and it's Nebraska Omaha Mavericks football program. Their first season was 1911. So they existed when the Titanic was getting built, and their last season, 99 years later, they operated in Division II. They had an all-time bowl record of 2-1. and one. Congratulations to them. And an all-time record overall above 500 at 440 and 382. In March of 2011, the Nebraska Board of Regents voted to disband the team because they wanted to save money. And that's kind of the whole idea with a lot of these programs. They disband because, again, they don't have a big stadium. They're smaller schools. It's not worth it. The cost of maintaining the facility and the jerseys, it becomes overwhelming. Normally, it's the exact opposite. You see college football programs paying for every other sport, literally every other sport. That's normally how it is. But when you've got situations, teams in FCS, teams in Division II, this can happen. Although, although this is avoidable, there are plenty of very small college football programs that can operate. These are just teams that took the crazy radical route and actually disbanded. But yes, Nebraska Omaha, I have seen their college basketball team. They're still in operation. But moving on, next we're going to be talking about Iona football. Yes, I, I remember Iona in terms of basketball, but their football team disbanded in 2008. They were an FCS independent with an all-time record of 196 and 214 and a 0-0 zero zero bowl record. They did win two conference titles, even though they were mainly an independent, and they discontinued in 2008. You know, it's very eerie to look at their football field, and you just see a bunch of brick buildings surrounding it. What a str It looks like one of those Ivy League football stadiums. I remember doing several videos on Ivy League stadiums about four or five months ago. Those were pretty interesting. They got a little Iona prep there. Imagine if Iona football existed. It would be very interesting. I'd like to see them try and compete in the FCS level. The next team, it is Wichita State football. Seems like everyone knows Wichita State for basketball, but yes, they did have a football team. Their first season all the way back in 1897. Their last season coming in 1986. So they also lasted 99 years and they mainly competed in the Missouri Valley Conference, compiling a bull record of 0-3. and three. They did have 14 total conference titles. They had an all-time record just under 500, and they lasted 99 years as a football program. Look at that helmet. Bring back Wichita State football, please. Wichita State is such an amazing name. 
I always loved when they were good in basketball with like Greg Marshall, the coach. Yeah. Uh, Ron Baker, Fred Van Fleet. But yes, Wichita State football, it doesn't exist. It hasn't existed forever. The next one, it's Gonzaga football. So, so one of the biggest powerhouses in college basketball, possibly joining the Big 12 Conference right now. They are part of the West Coast. We'll see if they end up joining. But they had a football program from 1892 to 1941, and they played at Gonzaga Stadium. They were an independent, and they did appear in one single bowl game. They went 0-1. They do have an all-time record above 500 at 134 and 99. But Gonzaga football, it's crazy. That, that's a very strange contrast. You've got a college basketball team that over the last 20 years, they're a top five program. They're a top five program, and their football team doesn't exist. Very strange contrast when it comes to the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and then this would be the most famous one I'm sure most people are aware, the University of Chicago, a founding member of the Big Ten with 12 conference titles, two claimed national titles in the early 1900s, and an all-time record above 500, they ended up disbanding their program in 1939, they withdrew from the Big Ten in 1946, and this is so interesting to look back at a university that doesn't exist and their record against other Big Ten teams. They actually faced Maryland once. Maryland didn't even join the Big Ten until like 2013, but you can see their record against Michigan and Ohio State. It certainly needs some work. They loved facing Northwestern. I mean, they're 26-8 and eight against Northwestern. If you're Northwestern, you got to be a little angry about that. I mean, this team doesn't even exist. They're 28-6 and six against us. Come on. They beat up on Purdue as well. But yes, Chicago, they claimed that the game of football was not part of what their institution aspired to be. So they made this decision in the 30s, you know, when football was obviously in a completely different place to say, we're almost better than football. We want to focus on academics. It's like when a like a five-star number one overall player, you know, goes to Harvard and says, I want, you know, I want to focus on my academics, even though I could get so much more money. That's kind of what Chicago did. And they obviously made the wrong choice. Such an interesting decision. And you can see they've got a very nice logo. I love looking at that logo. It does remind me of the Bears. You know, the Bears recently changed their primary logo from that skinny C to an actual bear. And to me, it just looks obnoxious, but that's a very nice logo. It does kind of look like the Cincinnati Reds, though, I'll be honest. But there is that as well. And then we also have a unique situation with a college football team completely being defunct and then coming back from the dead. It's UAB. So UAB back in 2014 ended their football program, but there was so much outrage over this. In 2015, a year after, there was an announcement, there was a public fundraiser, and they did intend on returning and their intentions were to return for the 2017 season. So from 2015 to 2016, UAB did not exist. They did put together a non-conference schedule in 2017, which is when they returned to play. So UAB kind of had a big scare there where they disbanded and then came back. I guess they would be... Uh, you know, the second most recent one act after the Jacksonville Dolphins in terms of disbanding, but they did come back. So it's a little bit of a different situation in terms of that. But that is going to do it for college football teams that don't exist anymore. The most drastic one being the University of Chicago, considering they were a member of the Big Ten. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.